Hey everybody, this is the video going over my kind of morning routine, if you will, my daily warm-ups for upward and downward escape picking. And these are motions that you're gonna to need to master if you want to start playing faster, especially playing faster scalar stuff. So all the exercises I'm about to go over isolate and break out that motion and help you train it so that when you do it at a faster speed, you're doing it right. So the first exercise reads double downstroke to USX. USX just means upward escape picking. If there's any Troy Grady fans watching this and I'm using the term incorrectly, sorry. So the first exercise is an exercise that isolates the upward escape motion so that when you're switching strings down, you've mastered this motion. And the way we do that is by playing two downstrokes. I'm going to play an A major arpeggio. And of course, you've got the tabs here. If you don't, you can get them on my Buy Me Coffee website. And we're going to play downstroke, downstroke, and then upstroke. And then pull up. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this motion with our wrist to play those two notes. And then when we're coming back, we're going to use wrist twisting in order to accomplish that motion. And there's many more things about why we're going to do it that way, but they won't be covered in this video. I'll eventually do some videos on picking uh, and why I approach it the way I do, but this is the way that I'm sharing with you how I do these exercises. So we're going to play that. And you can do all kinds of variations. You can do, uh, you could play B C sharpie. You could do B flat C sharpie. You want to make sure that each of these notes is ringing out, but ringing out individually. You don't want you want and when you're first starting out this exercise, I do recommend practicing with a metronome so that you can ensure a very uh, even rhythm. But after you've got it down, I encourage you to do it without a metronome, and I've got a kitchen timer right over there. And usually what I do throughout my warm-ups is I'll set the timer for one or two minutes, and I'll start with that motion slower. And then I'll speed it up, and I'll also move it around the neck, I'll move it to different strings. The bottom line point with this exercise is that you're isolating that upstroke and rotation, and you actually want to overemphasize that rotation when you're practicing this slowly, because if you do it slowly and do it correctly, as you practice faster and faster, that motion will shrink, but it will be very correct whenever you're playing at higher speeds. So I, I will go through this exercise, something like this. That's exercise number one. And one last note about all these exercises, you wanna play them on a clean patch. So that you can clearly hear that you are putting a very even articulation on every note very correctly. It's very easy to play with a high gain sound and be playing something like you know, and have all these different dynamics. And then when you go to play, you know, some fast shreddy line on the top of the neck, then it's not clear, it's not even, and the gain is saving you. And that's a great thing, but you want your fundamental technique to be really solid. Okay, exercise number two is just the opposite. So we'll play something like uh, G, D, E. And you're gonna play that with upstroke, upstroke, and then a downstroke, and you'll emphasize, again, that wrist rotation downward, so. you can move it all around where you want. That one kind of only works on um, the G and B strings, but of course you're welcome to move it around to whatever other strings you want, as long as you're doing two upstrokes and then downstroke, isolating that motion. Hey everybody, I forgot to add this exercise when I was originally filming, 
And this is another exercise that combines the USX and DSX motions. So you're going to play F, A, and E, F sharp, A, and E. And then you're going to kind of vary between this second pattern, which is F, F natural, C natural, and E. And it's all notated there for you in the tabs. So it goes like this. So one of the things that you need to make extra sure of is that when you're on that second pattern, you're going to end on this downstroke. And normally when you start that second pattern, that's also a downstroke. So you need to make sure that you, uh, I think of it as pushing through or that second pattern. Push. So this exercise will help you if you have to deal with some kind of a riff where you need to go back and forth between those different picking motions. So this next exercise is a continuation of what we've done, but they are progressive exercises, meaning that they're typically done at a slow speed and then you increase them. So again, we're isolating the downstroke or the downward escape and the upward escape, and we're just isolating those in kind of a, a, another way. And again, just like the last ones, you can move them all around. I set a timer for a minute, maybe two minutes, and I move them all around the neck as I play them. But it's just, um, we'll do it on, I don't know if you'll be able to hear. We'll do it on, say, 76. So you can hear the metronome. <laughs> So that's how that one is played, but there's a couple things that you really want to pay attention to here. Number one is we can do a whole bunch of variations. We could play, or we could play, or. I like doing all these different variations because there's going to be points in your playing where you want that level of finger independence. So it's very important to use a proper position and play all the notes with the appropriate finger. So I'm not playing with one, two, and three, I'm playing with one, three, four. Or I'm playing one, two, four, right? We can also move this all around. And I want you to notice a couple things, which is how still my entire arm is, even at a rather reasonable speed on this exercise. So I'll start with something like 66, and then I'll just flip through my metronome here. 66 is where I'm at now, I started at about 40, and I'll just uh, play slowly. Take it on higher. So you want to make sure that as you're doing that, you're not using uh, this kind of arm motion and tensing up all these muscles or anything in here or even in back in your shoulder kind of lat lats area to get this kind of motion. You can see. And you can think of that, that motion as being initiated from this kind of ring around your finger and thinking about the pick motion coming from there. So that's how we do that one. And then the next one we'll just do as the opposite, which start on F typically. F, E, D, C. One thing I want to point out about these exercises, which are twins, is you're not just doing a single upward escape or downward escape. You're actually kind of doing both when you touch that top note or bottom note on the first on the on each exercise. So if I play D E F, I'm leaving this way. I'm going to touch that top note, 
and then I'm immediately doing that upward style escape. Downward, upward, land. Downward, upward, land. And on the on the F1, upward, downward, land. Upward, downward, land. So you want to make sure that you're getting into and out of that top or bottom note very efficiently. So, so far everything we've done has just been across two strings, but the other motion that we need to work is doing the upward and downward escape across multiple strings. And the way that I approach this is based on what I've observed when watching the players that I model my playing after, how they do sweeps. And there's kind of two ways to effectuate a sweep. So if we play A minor here, you can do it with the wrist, but the problem with doing that is that you end up in this far reaching position where you don't have any more motion left to go with your right hand. And so what I've noticed with a lot of players is that the, one of my teachers called it lanes, you know, if I'm playing across uh, uh, E, B, and G, I might think of my pick as just kind of resting on B, and then I'm going over to E to hit some notes, and I'm going over to G and hit some notes. So the way that we want to train ourselves to transition across these strings, which do get pretty wide, about a, close to a little over an inch, is we want to do our picking motion with our wrist, and then we want to move our hand, or we want to, we want to move our hand by moving our whole arm, by extending our elbow out this way. So if I play this next exercise, which again, I start very slowly on this one, and then I go through and work it at multiple speeds. So here's 70, so I'll play. I started overemphasizing the arm movement there so you could see very clearly. And then you might get to a faster speed. you want. You know, you can do it on A, do it on G. Now one of the things you'll notice with my playing is that there is a bit of a... And that's a very easy habit to get into, but you want to make sure that it's even. And very musical. Then you're going to repeat that exercise same tempo, and then you'll go up in tempo. So you've done it, all, all, all of these exercises, downstroke, and then upstroke, up tempo, downstroke, upstroke, up tempo. Or if you want to do upstroke, downstroke, up tempo. But you want to practice both of those motions. You want to do these exercises always as a pair at a given tempo, and then increase the speed. So then the next exercise is starting with upstroke. And you'll find that your wrist plane relative to the guitar tends to be tilted a certain way based on the upstroke or the downstroke. And so we'll do the downstroke one now. I'll, again, I'll start very slowly and I'll turn myself a little bit so you can see this rotation. So that's how you do it, downstroke and upstroke. So now after you've gone through all these exercises, you've isolated the upward escape. You've isolated the downward escape. You've isolated a combined motion for them. And you've also practiced these motions across strings, all of this doing both upward and downward strokes. So that is kind of the daily warm up I go through, not counting a lot of the scales, which will be in another video. And there's one little bonus exercise on here for you. 
to practice this, which is an excerpt from Dream Theater's A Change of Seasons. And it's just a very fast little riff. You could work it up to speed or just use it to practice for fun. And it goes like this. So I hope this little exercise helps you. If you'd like, you can buy me a coffee on my website and we'll be talking soon.